All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Dell XPS 13 9360. So you want a T5 and then a PH0 to get the bottom cover off. So to remove the bottom cover, there's T5 screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Once you remove those, and again, you want to keep the screws in order. You want to lift this little cover. And under here, there's a PH0 screw, so you remove that, okay? After you remove all those screws, what you're going to want to do is get a thin pry tool. And along the base, you're going to want to pry this cover off. So I just stick the tool in the little gap, and then you pry it towards yourself or towards the bottom, okay? Just like this. You can hear it pop. And just be careful not to stick the tool too far or you can um, damage the little microphones in there and other stuff, okay? So you just get the tool in there. Once you get that, you wanna go down to the sides and do the same thing, okay? And if you get enough, you can slide like your fingernail or another tool along the side, okay? Just like that. And then these ones, they kind of have like hooks that grab in that way, so what you do is you slide it back and that will release those just like that. Okay, and then you can lift the cover off. So that's how you get that cover out. And underneath you will see the battery and the CMOS battery. So this computer was having issues turning on. So what you had to do was disconnect the CMOS battery and the regular battery. So to disconnect the battery. Sorry about that. So somebody called again. Excuse me. All right. So anyways, as I was saying, we're going to disconnect the battery. So let's do that. So what I do is I just grab this with my fingernails. Um, if you don't have fingernails or you can't do this with tweezers or something because it's very hard to do this with any other tool, you can just um, take the screws out for the battery and then lift it and s try and use the cable. But I try and pull on the connector itself. So like this. And I kind of just push it back and forth and wobble it. Okay. And then the cable will come out just like that. All right. And once you get that connector out, you don't want to let it go back into the slot because you don't want it to go diagonal. So make sure that you kind of lift it up and over, okay? So just like this, lift it up and take the battery connector out so it's not going to touch the battery. All right, so if you have the booting issue, you can try this too. There's no replaceable RAM as far as I know unless it's on the other side of the motherboard, but I'm not going to take the motherboard out. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the CMOS battery as well. Same thing, just use your fingernails and then just walk the connector out by wobbling it back and forth, just like that. Oops, that's the speaker connector. <laughs> the CMOS battery is down here, so you want to do that and disconnect that one as well. I actually had that partially out from when I was working on it earlier. Um, and once you got the battery and the CMOS battery out, okay, oops, let me zoom out again. Once you got both of those out, you want to open it. Press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds to drain any power from the board. All right. If you're lucky, it's just a temporary short. Okay. All right. Once you drain any power, what I do is I take a toothbrush. Just make sure there's no dust like sitting on the board. You can kind of just clean it off. Sometimes the dust will cause temporary shorts, which can screw up the computer. And then I just blow the dust off. Okay. Um, if you're going to blow this with your breath, make sure you're not going to accidentally spit all over your computer. Um, but you can do it that way. All right. Once you did that, what you want to do is the two pins on the back. Oh, let me see if I can even show this. So the two pins on the back of this connector, I basically just get my screwdriver and then touch the two together and I kind of just wobble it around to make sure that both pins are kind of being pressed okay and then once you got that just do that for a few seconds you can reconnect the CMOS battery and we can reconnect the battery but uh, I'm gonna show what else is inside the computer first not that um, this video is mainly for fixing the power issue but Anyways, I guess I'll do disassembly as well. So for the other components, you want to switch to a PH1 screwdriver. And then there's the SSD here. This is probably the main one people are going to change. But you take the screw out, the SSD pops up like that. Then you can pull this out. 
This is a PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD, so if you want, you can upgrade with a larger SSD. If you want to know how to clone the SSD or something like that, I do have a video for that. If you can't find it, just let me know and I will post it. Um, I will comment it for you. All right, so you got the wireless card here, just like every other one. There's this little bracket covering it. You take that out, then you can pop the antennas off by the tail, not by the front. And then it'll pop up. You can wiggle it and pull it out. So if you want to see that, I have a whole bunch of videos. I'm not going to mess with all this stuff because the customer just needed me to check this boot issue, and that should be it. You got the DC jack here. Let me see if I can at least see where that is. Usually the charge port is easy to replace on these, but let's see. Because they put this adhesive here. Normally they don't have adhesive on these on other models, but we'll peel that out. So here the charge port is connected right there, so you can easily take it out. They might have tucked the cable underneath. They do that a lot of times. Um, and then you got, I think this is for like the webcam connector or something, this cable. You just walk it out like the speaker cables and everything. Um, you got the LCD or LVDS connector is under this board. If you are going to take it out, again, make sure you did press and hold the power button while this battery was disconnected. You don't have to remove the CMOS battery for that. Then you got this little connector here, which also goes into the LCD connector. You got a cable that goes underneath the battery that connects these two boards together. Um, what else? I think one is the keyboard and one's the trackpad, but I'm not going to take the battery out to check because then I have to mess with all these adhesives that are stuck to the battery um, that holds these speakers together. And yeah, you got the two speakers. They're each held in with two screws. And... Yeah, I unplugged the speaker connector last time on accident. But anyways, that's pretty much all there is. We're going to plug the battery in, and then you also want to plug it into the wall. Whenever you reset the CMOS or the BIOS, um, or not every time, but on a lot of the computer models, you will end up having to plug the computer in for it to boot up properly. Okay, Make sure you line up the battery connector properly, and then just pull it back in, just like that. I'm going to put the cover back in. Again, you want to slide the cover on. So you start it slightly back and then slide it in place. Okay. So for this connector, you want to slide this one in place just like that. So when you slide it, you don't want to be lifting the thing too much. You want to kind of have, let it fall down a little bit. Okay. Oops. Let me hide this tape. It's coming out. So, I mean, that tape was already like that. But, oh, yeah. It doesn't want to stay over there okay well whatever all right so get that slide the cover on slide the cover in place and then you can pop the clips down okay now we're gonna open open it gently because it's missing the two hinge screws that we took out okay so it's probably not gonna turn on until I plug it in let's see well, actually it might be turning on already but I'm going to plug it in anyways, just to be safe. Okay, and usually after you reset the BIOS or the CMOS, it does take a while. So right now, as you can see, it's not on. Um, but it is doing something. So this is blinking. I think the battery is actually low, the main battery. So hopefully while it's plugged in now, it should boot up. Again, you do have to wait a little while. Um, right now, it's not on, so I'm going to press the button again. Oh, I think the battery's too low, so I might have to wait for that. Hmm. It's, it's flashing orange. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it might be. Is it doing something right now? It's doing nothing. Okay, I'm going to press the button and see what happens. Okay, this light's on, so it's doing something. It turned itself back off. So usually this, it does like a bunch of power cycles. So you just have to be patient. Don't try and force shut it off. Don't press and hold the button. Just press it and let it go. If it does turn itself off, you can try turning it back on. But don't press and hold the button to turn it off. So here you can see the light is on. It turned itself back off. Might be hard to see. It's turning itself back on again. And then it turned off again. Hopefully it's actually going through. Let's see. Sometimes it might not work, and then it might be a motherboard issue. But there you go. It finally turned itself back on. 
date and time is screwed up, of course, so we're going to have to go to the BIOS setup and set that back up. Let's see here, so wait for it to boot up. I need to check the date and time, but I don't have that right now. Um, I think it's like around 7.20 or something of November 28th. November 28th, 2020. Let's see, 7. Can I check the time without killing my recording? No. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to guess the time right now. I guess I'll fix it later, but we'll say 7.25. Okay, p.m. There we go. So now we'll exit this, but now you can see it's good. It powered on. Okay. Now, after you reset it, it should start up again. The, the light is coming back on. You can see the computer's going. What We just want to see the spinning thing. Oh, BitLocker. Oh, no. I hope they have the BitLocker information for this. Um, but anyways, the computer is working. The BitLocker thing came up because I pulled the SSD out from the slot, and it detects that the SSD was removed. But anyways... Hopefully this video helped you guys if your computer wasn't turning on or to upgrade the SSD. The RAM I don't think is upgradable. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, like and subscribe so others can find these videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.